Greetings, I am Calvin Dufresne of the Reared Reveal, and today is TRR exclusive. I will be interviewing Murray Sabrin, author of Tax Free 2000. In 1997, Sabrin was the Libertarian nominee for governor in New Jersey. In 2008, Sabrin sought the Republican nomination for the United States Senate unsuccessfully. Currently, he is the professor of finance here at Ramapole College in New Jersey. Let's see where the case begins. I'd like to thank you uh, for being our first ever uh, TRR exclusive uh, YouTube interview. Well, thank you, Kelvin, for inviting me. So uh, let's begin. Um, first, my first question would be uh, your ideas in your first uh, book, um, Tax Free 2000. You talked about like limited government and um, taxation in general. How have those ideas that you talked about back in 1994 and five? How have they changed or or evolved? Um, now, in, in 2012? Well, I think we need the ideas that I present in the book more than ever because government has grown so much since the mid-1990s. It's grown domestically. We are involved in these undeclared wars overseas. We had this huge deficit of $1 trillion plus for four straight years. We have uh, nearly a $16 trillion uh, national debt. Uh, the money printing has just accelerated the last few years to bail out the economy. So more than ever, we need to implement the ideas that I presented in Tax-Free 2000. We need to go back to the Constitution. We need to um, uh, downsize the federal government. And calling for a tax-free society is, quote, radical, but it's really in line with the founders' vision for the country that we should live in a peaceful, society based upon voluntary exchange, based upon peaceful relations with the rest of the world. And those are the ideas I think are critical for our future in the 21st century. Now, you, from what I understand, you're working on a new book. Would you give us the title and tell us a little bit about that? I'm excited about the new book because it's basically a follow-up to my uh, book on how to create a tax-free society. This book takes what's happened with Madoff and other people who have been involved in po creating Ponzi schemes in the private sector and turn that on its head and say the government is doing the exact same thing with Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, public education and a whole host of programs that people think are natural for the government to undertake. And so what I'm going to show in this book is that the government is doing exactly what people have gone to jail for, namely creating Ponzi schemes. Yeah. And uh, what's the, the title to the book? It's called Ponzi Government. All right. And w when would we be uh, seeing that come to... Well, I'm hoping to finish the uh, draft of it uh, this summer. I started working last summer. And with all my responsibilities here at the college and other writings I'm doing on my website, murraysabrin.com, yes. uh, it takes a time to really write the book that I, I foresee. And I write best when I have long blocks of time, a free time, which is starting in May when the semester is over. All right. Um, so you're a professor of finance, and when you ran for, uh, whether you were running for governor or whether you were running for the U.S. Senate, you were most outspoken talking about economics and, and, and finances. What's your opinion? What's your uh, theory on the state of the economy now? Are we going through a recovery? Are we going, things, are things going worse? What's your, what's your take on it? Well, I think most people have recognized that this is one of the weakest recoveries in the uh, American history that the uh, growth has been very slow coming out of the recession and there's a simple reason for that. Uh, government can't stimulate the economy. The private sector creates prosperity and jobs and so by the government um, spending money on these stimulus programs, the Federal Reserve giving us virtually zero interest rates so savers are getting nothing on their uh, bank accounts and CDs and money market accounts, their income has gone down. So the government is trying to do what they tried in the 1930s, which failed miserably and uh, prolonged the Depression till World War II. So we need to go back to that old-time religion, if you will, of yeah. balanced budgets at much lower levels, deregulate the economy so entrepreneurs can do what they do best, which is create products and distribute them at prices that people can afford. And we need to get people back to work by making sure that companies know what the rules are, they don't change every six months, every year, and they can plan ahead so they can create these great businesses, which they're still doing despite all the problems that we face. We still have companies like Google and Apple and a new company, Instagram, that was just 
bought out by Facebook for a billion dollars when they don't even have any revenue. That's really the American dream, is creating a company where you started with nothing and you increase um, uh, owner value by, uh, uh, by an exponential amount in a very short period of time. Uh, and your thoughts on the, the presidential primary right now, we have uh, Mitt Romney, uh, Newt Gingrich, Ron Paul, and now, as we heard, uh, Rick Santorum is suspending his campaign. Uh, what, what are your thoughts out of the candidates that we have now who, who would be best to, to be, not only be the Republican nominee and represent the Republican Party, but who do you think would be best to unseat Obama in November? Well, I've been a longtime Ron Paul supporter. I met him nearly 30 years ago at a conference, and I just find him one of the great statesmen uh, of American history that uh, he understands the Constitution, he understands monetary policy, he's for limited government, he's for civil liberties, he's for um, uh, uh, having declared wars as opposed to undeclared wars and not trying to remake the world using the power of the American military. He's strong on national defense, troops support him overwhelmingly as opposed to the other candidates. So in a head-to-head -head battle of Obama versus Ron Paul, Ron Paul would be extremely competitive because he brings in a lot of the civil libertarians, the disgruntled Democrats, independents, and fiscal conservatives, all the people who realize that Washington is the problem, as Ronald Reagan famously said, and uh, Washington is not the solution, and Ron Paul would get the government off our backs, and that would mean a huge increase in individual freedom, more prosperity, and uh, we would get back to fiscal sanity in this country. Yeah, and what do you have to say of uh, the other candidates remaining, uh, Newt Gingrich and, and Mitt Romney? Well, I think uh, th they are part of the problem. They both believe in the welfare warfare state. Mm -hmm. Throughout the campaign, they said they agree with Obama on military spending. They just have a different approach, possibly, but they all want to have an aggressive military policy overseas, which is something that we've had and we've seen what it's cost us in, in lives and, um, and uh, money. So I've concluded 40 years ago, we essentially have one party in Washington, D.C., the Washington Party, made up of two wings, the Democrats and the Republicans, and that's why I became a politically independent for so many years and rejoined the Republican Party in the late 1990s to try to make a difference within the Republican Party. But unfortunately, uh, even here in New Jersey, so-called moderate New Jersey, they still believe in a lot of the welfare warfare uh, policies of uh, the Democrats and the Republicans that have brought us to the brink of economic catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, in New Jersey here, we have uh, the primary uh, for the United States Senate, the Republican primary. We have three candidates that, are, that filed the paperwork at jo Joseph Rulo, Joseph Krillos, and, and Bader Colmar. Is there any of them that you feel um, that you could possibly endorse? Or how, what, what are your thoughts about the uh, November against Bob Menendez? Well, uh, Senator Menendez has been the tax collector for the welfare warfare state since he's been in Congress, first as a congressman and now as a U.S. senator. And he should easily be defeated by a candidate who can say what's wrong with this country, namely we're taxing too much, we're spending too much, we're regulating too much, we're printing money, uh, and we have um, uh, empire bu nation building overseas, something we don't need. George Bush ran on a humble foreign policy in 2000, and he barely won, but the point is he tapped into a, a strain of American uh, political thought that we don't engage in nation building. We don't know what is best for nations overseas. So unless the candidates come up with a real alternative to Bob Menendez's big government policies, instead of just criticizing him, uh, he's going to win again, unfortunately, which means the people of New Jersey will still pay high taxes and will have uh, more wars in the future. Mm -hmm. And you, you ran as a libertarian at one time, and then you ran as a Republican at one time. Well, what's your thoughts on the Republican Party today? Uh, last time around with the nomination of, of, of John McCain, where in, in 2000 he ran and he was completely rejected. And then now we have a huge division between these, these few candidates that, that represent different wings of the Republican Party, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of discord and... and what are your thoughts on the, the Republican Party today? Well, it seems to me that if you have two political parties, they should have two distinct philosophies and ideologies and uh, public policy prescriptions. 
I don't see that much difference between the Republicans and the Democrats. They both believe in the so-called safety net, which means Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and I've criticized those programs and offered alternatives, things to make things better, as opposed to just saying no to them. I believe that people should be helped, but there's a right way to do it, and that's called the philanthropy sector, or the voluntary sector, mm -hmm. th which takes uh, which is in, where people get involved at the local level. I'm a founding trustee of a health care center in Bergen County. Uh, it's up and running in Hackensack. It provides health care to the uninsured at no cost to them using voluntary contributions from the community and other, organi and, uh, other organizations. That's the way to help people having a real social safety net as opposed to these huge government programs which waste tens and tens of billions of dollars uh, because uh, there's very little accountability and oversight. So if you really want to help people, the best way to do it is at the local level, at the grassroots level, using local resources, as opposed to this trickle-down economics from Washington or Trenton. And that's one of the things I'm going to be talking about in my book as well, Ponzi government, is that uh, it doesn't make any sense financially, and it, these programs are unsustainable long-term if we rely on tax and spend to maintain these programs. And um, also, uh, you mentioned before that you've been a, a longtime supporter of Ron Paul, and you came up and you, you helped campaign for him back in October here in New Jersey. And um, it's called the, the Cause of Liberty, the, the Liberty Movement. When, when did you become involved in it? When did you... Well, I first had my enlightenment, if you will, in the late 60s, having lived through the 1960s with the Great Society Program and the Vietnam War. By the late 60s, I realized the welfare warfare state was going to lead us to a disaster. Here it is more than 40 years later, and we are at the brink. Yeah. We are so extended overseas. We have this huge deficit and debt. We have this endless printing of money. And so we are at the end game of this experiment called the welfare warfare state. That's why I think it's a very exciting time with Ron Paul's candidacy, with Senator Rand Paul in the... In the uh, Senate from Kentucky. Uh, there are members of uh, the House of Representatives who ran on a very libertarian-oriented platform in 2010. Some of them are running in 2012. So I'm very optimistic because I know financially the welfare warfare state cannot endure. It's unsustainable. And therefore, we have to have the ideas. We have to have the solutions. And what would you say? What's next for Murray Sabrin after Ponzi government? What's next? Disney World. That's where Disney I'm going. <laughs> Disney World. Uh, no, I, I really just want to do what I do best, right? Um, from my website, murraysabrin.com, which gets picked up by other websites like New Jersey Newsroom. I occasionally write for politickernj.com. Um, I'm debating a colleague of mine at the end of uh, April uh, on the welfare state. Uh, Campaign for Liberty on campus is sponsoring the debate. Uh, he teaches um, social welfare, I teach finance, and have been a candidate. So it should be a very lively debate as to why we should, uh, I believe, abolish the welfare state and replace it with uh, true philanthropy. And so my goal is to uh, get on the speaking tour after I, uh, my book is published and just make the case for liberty on college campuses in front of business people, because they're the ones that create wealth. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. Yeah. Uh, people who think that the government creates wealth really do not understand how an economy works, how a free market economy works. If they believe in quasi-socialism, then they think the government creates wealth, but the government doesn't create wealth. And I explained that in the classroom using basic economics and financial principles and showing the data which um, confirm that uh, the free enterprise system has created the greatest amount of wealth in the shortest period of time for the greatest number of people. So I think the evidence is, in, is quite conclusive and therefore, we have to promote the free enterprise, uh, limited government message all over the country and, quite frankly, all over the world. And there are people all over the world, young people, that have gravitated toward Ron Paul's campaign. And that's, I think, why he's so optimistic, even though he's lagging in the delegate count. But now with Rick Santorum out of the race, anything is possible in Tampa in August. That's why uh, it's going to be a very interesting uh, campaign uh, primary season as we go into the convention. And what, what do you think about the Revered Review's uh, mission? And if you could say one thing to small-town America, what would it be? Well, small-town America is really what America is all about. America is a collection of small towns where people uh, with their neighbors uh, uh, build businesses, um, uh, do phila philanthropy, 
And it's essentially the quintessential American experience of small town America. Even in Bergen County, where we have over 900,000 people, it's small town America because we have 70 towns. And they work quite well. Uh, there are still some uh, uh, things that could be changed. I wrote a piece saying well, we should incorporate all the towns into one city, call it Bergen City. Yeah. And so I wrote an article about that. Uh, but uh, right now, I think small, America, small town America is what America is all about because it represents the values the founders envisioned for this country, not top-down economics from Washington or Trenton or any other entity that's far away from the people, but people knowing who the mayor is, who knowing who the police chief is and all the local officials. So if you have a problem, you can go to them rather than trying to get something done with a faraway bureaucracy that really doesn't care about what's happening in small-town America. Mm. Thanks for your time, Murray. Thank you, Calvin.